Hi friends, uh, I'm Shankar Hamadi again, and we are talking about Soaring Through Chaos. As we've said before, the purpose of these interviews is to help us understand how we can do, deal with the current crisis and any crisis that we deal with in our life. Right now, with the pandemic still in full force, I think we seem to be going towards the second wave. It's very natural for all of us to feel distressed, have that apprehension about what can happen to our near and dear ones, about job losses, any kind of fears. So, but this is where the, we are out of our comfort zone. And this, uh, and the many scientists say, these are the times when there are opportunities to grow. So with me is an amazing person I've got to know over the last uh, 10 years, Asma al Hamiz, who I think came from uh, the Middle East, from the Arabian country to, um, to the United States to learn about psychology and all that stuff. So let's hear from Asma. Asma, tell us a little bit about what brought you to the US and what was your journey like? Thank you, Shankar. Thank you, what a lovely introduction. So um, it's, uh, it's so nice to be in, you know, interviewed by you and it's such an honor uh, to be talking to you about my journey and uh, my journey through studying not any psychology but transpersonal psychology specifically. So, um, you know, my journey started a long time ago. It probably started at around, you know, 2007. I was, uh, I was attending uh, self-development workshops and I was learning about, um, you know, uh, just uh, mindfulness and um, just, uh, it, was, it was a time in the UAE where there was so much um, self-development workshops happening. So things like, um, you know, mindfulness workshops, um, uh, you know, t you know, things like managing your time in the office and all those different things. And I started to, um, you know, be an effective leader and all, and all those different workshops. And I started attending them and I took, I was really interested in understanding more about human behavior. And um, as I grew in my career, because I started working in the investment world, I was 19 years old and I was working as a hedge fund analyst in 2004. That's when I started. So the pressure started at a really young age and I started to, um, you know, read more and attend all these different workshops, you know, self-development transformation workshops to understand how I can um, just be effective and, and alleviate some of the stresses because the stress is not going to go away. The pressure, the work pressure is not, wasn't going to go away. So within those different workshops, I um, found an interest in these, in, in, you know, a personal interest in, in it. And then I, um, you know, did my MBA and within my MBA, I did, I did my MBA from the London Business School. And uh, 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 that's where I obtained it. And um, within the program, we had a lot of uh, you know, leadership classes, effective negotiation skills, organizational behavior. I, uh, I focused a lot of my electives on those kind of studies. And there was an assignment um, uh, in, uh, in a, a, an international assignment in Cape Town, in APSA, about internal communications. And uh, I spent some time doing that. And, you know, my interest just grew and I really enjoyed it. And then I was also working in the in the hedge fund industry at that time, so the pressure also, you know, I, I was working in parallel, so the pressure also increased. So what I ended up doing is um, asking my com the company I, I used to work for at the time for a leave of absence just to to deeply study psychology, and I wanted specifically to study transpersonal psychology because that is the study of um, you know, the, the, the mind, body, spirit, the psycho-spiritual element. Uh, it goes into a lot of the literature that um, uh, Abraham Maslow started in the humanistic uh, uh, psychology field, but then t took over to the self-realization and, uh, and a lot of our studies. So, that, that, so that's what took me to California. But the reason specifically is why I chose the Institute of Transpersonal Psychology 
was because I wanted a transformative education. I wanted a, a, an education where my personal journey um, as a student, as, as a student of psychology and as a, um, as a budding psychologist, a counselor who eventually, you know, um, uh, the, the program I chose eventually puts you into the track of becoming a marriage and family therapist. Um, uh, you know, I, uh, it's, it basically preps you to uh, constantly reflect on yourself and reflect on your journey because this is the kind, this is specifically the, the school of psychology that um, emphasizes very much on your personal journey and how it affects you as a therapist um, and, and the importance of that. So that's basically what took me to California. And I remember meeting you because I used to go to ITP very often. Um, to, they had one of the most amazing Sufi programs. I think the co-director or co-founder of ITP was, had a, was very much into the Sufi um, you know, track. They also right. had amazing, uh, uh, Jim Fadiman was doing amazing work in um, um, understanding people. They interacted with students like they were buddies. So really right. it was 20 minutes from my home, but it took me almost 15 years to find out about ITP. So sitting in Dubai, sitting in uh, uh, the UAE, how did you find out about ITP? Because even I was literally 20 minutes away from my home to ITP, and it took me 15 years to find it. Yeah. So, you know, when I was interested in this, um, in this, uh, you know, theory and the school of psychology, I have a dear friend, a mentor, um, a teacher, you know, a therapist, um, a friend called Cynthia Gonzalez, and she's based here in Dubai. And um, Cynthia advised me to look at the Institute of Transpersonal Psychology and the California Institute of Integral Studies, which she's a graduate from. Yes. So, you know, we're yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. So word of mouth. So when I when I applied, when I was looking into it, you know, I got this recommendation, and I um, I was at the time, um, you know, I had a trip to going to the to California. So I visited both schools. I felt more called to the to the Bay Area, to the peninsula, to the peninsula rather than um, than the city. Um, so I I just really liked that community feel and. These schools have a community feel because, you know, we start as a cohort and we, we grow together and we have really, um, you know, good, high quality teachers teaching us. And in what ways um, did it make a change in your life? Because uh, I think you're back in the investment uh, banking business, you're back in the financial yeah. world. Uh, has, yeah. has something shifted in you? Yes, of course, of course, you know, it deepened my, my experience, my, you know, it enriched my, my experience, my, um, the quality of my interaction with people, whether it is, you know, a friend, whether it is a colleague, whether it is, you know, a manager, the, my experiences uh, and, my, and the discipline at ITP just helped me engage in a deeper more authentic way it's almost like it gave me permission to be me and and and, to, and also to and also the um the grounding to um to just you know interact with people from a place of um of you know true truth uh, i mean i i you know when i was at the london business school that that's the when I you know went to that that school. It, it was a good school. It it gave me the confidence, more like an external confidence. It was more like um, like a, an an intellectual confidence. Confidence. The same thing happened with ITP in the theoretical aspect when, within psychology specifically. I mean, I have it gave me experience to understand the clinical aspect of of psychology. But also because of the of the transformative, reflective way, my personal experience is always um, is always present and engaged. So, for example, if I was to have a conversation, with, uh, you know, a, a difficult conversation with someone, after the after that kind of studies and after those experiences, I'm able to be more self-aware. I'm able to be more. 
um, um, present. I'm able to be more um, self-aware of where I'm projecting maybe or where the other person is projected. So overall, it just gives you a very good sense of self. And, uh, and, you know, this is personally my experience. I don't know how, how my colleagues feel <laughs> from, from the school, but maybe, you know, another thing is because I never um, stopped learning about myself. I never stopped learning, um, you know, uh, I never stopped the psycho-spiritual or psychosomatic experiences, like Five Rhythms, for example. We met at Five Rhythms, I remember, and then at ITP. And yes. um, that reminds me, um, um, now that you're back in the in the uh, in the Arabian Gulf again in the UAE, um, have you been able to use what you've learned to empower people around you in a more formal setting, in a clinical or non-clinical setting? Right. Yes. Of course. Absolutely. So I um, yes. I mean, I've been ever since I came back from the US. I started to have. Um, you know, community workshops I had uh, in 2016 and in 2017 and in 2018. Every winter, I would start um, a group. Um, except, you know, I didn't I didn't do it in 2019 or 2020. But I, six, 2016, 17, and 18, I started a group for women creative expression where we we would sit around in a circle. It would be a safe environment to just explore and grow and, and offer support for each other and specifically use the expressive arts to, to, you know, as a medium to get there. So that's one thing I did and, and I really enjoyed. I also, um, I also uh, just do a lot of speakers, you know, speaker events. More recently, I spoke at the International Business Women's Group. Uh, who, that is based here in Abu Dhabi. I, I gave them a mindfulness uh, session, so mindfulness, mind, mindfulness during uh, difficult times. I also gave the company I work for, so I'm currently an employer um, at uh, at Emirates Investment Authority, which is a uh, an Abu Dhabi-based uh, UAE federal uh, level um, sovereign wealth fund, and and I gave them an internal, um, you know. Uh, master class on emotional resilience and uh, you know we discussed different um i gave them actually two two master class sessions but we we discussed you know and i gave them tips and exper experiential exercises and how to navigate these difficult times because we are going through times that call us to find the comfort and the discomfort uh, which is something i i always you know refer to and i say and it's a difficult task Yes, in fact, uh, the reason I'm even doing these talks, many of them are my teachers, like Jim Doty himself, who started the Center for Compassion at Stanford. Uh, some of them are my colleagues, and some of them are just friends from all walks of life. Is that it's easy to go into the self following mode. Times are difficult. But it is also the fact that most of our growth happens not when we are in our comfort zone, but when we are uncomfortable. In other words, yeah. if we stay in our nice little cozy comfort zone, then mm -hmm. the chances that we will have will be challenged to go outside our realm of possibilities. And you know this as a transpersonal psychologist. This is where we have to go, or you know, this is where the hero's journey begins, as Joseph Campbell would say. In what place do you think people can use this time? And you've already talked about this to some circles. In what ways can people use this time to actually go beyond just survival mode into thriving, into actually self-development mode, or into growing? What can they do to grow further? Right, exactly. And uh, you know, Viktor Frankl, uh, who wrote the book um, *The Man's Man's Search for Meaning*. Uh, you know, he was a Holocaust survivor. He uh, was quoted saying, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. And exactly. I think this is very applicable to, the, to our times right now. We are, you know, we, we are no longer able to change the fact that there are some families 
who are, um, you know, who are apart and who, are, who don't know when they'll see each other, you know, husbands and wives who have been separated, um, you know, poverty, livelihoods, people. So we, we can only change our attitude and the way we, um, you know, we, the way we um, are called to be in this world. So, um, so this time has uh, called me to, uh, to set up and to put, you know, to, to uh, put together. My, my plan was to do a physical center, you know, a physical platform. But, uh, you know, these times also ask, you know, these times are also a call for us to be flexible and to, to do what we can. So what I, what I ended up doing is, is starting up a virtual platform called um, Art of Being. And uh, Art of Being is a, you know, a platform for us to come together and to support each other, whether it's through um, you know, one-on-one -on -one workshops, through, uh, sorry, one-on-one -on -one, uh, sessions or workshops. And the aim really is to uh, provide support for the community because uh, you know, transformation happens when, when the community transforms. And, uh, and, you know, my, my personal experiences and qualification as, as a, as a uh, therapist, um, you know, is to, is to uh, be involved in, those, in that platform as an emotional wellness consultant right now. And um, going forward, there'll be more, more um, uh, creative, you know, um, uh, projects like, uh, you know, workshops or group for support uh, uh, or some yoga, kundalini yoga as well. I'm, a tra I'm training right now to be a kundalini yoga uh, teacher. Wow, wow, exciting. In fact, um, a lot of things you're saying, of course, we're familiar with these things in California because it's the right. mecca for all these things. People want to try out all these interesting things. How, must be pretty unique in Dubai or Abu Dhabi and all where you are involved, is that right? It is, it is, and it's not. I mean, you know, the, the beauty uh, about this part of the world, especially the UAE, is we are, ado we are an adopter of new ideas. I mean, across the board, you know, we adopt new ideas and it just, you know, happens really quick. And my aim really is to do more of, a, of an inside out uh, you know, an inside out support, you know, growth from the inside out, not just, you know, outside, you know, I have a good job or I, you know, uh, or I drive this car or I eat this nice restaurant. It's really important from the internal to have a solid, um, a solid, you know, uh, solid maturity and, and uh, to be, you know, wise and to use life's experiences to grow from them. And it's very important to have support that is um, creative and friendly and fun and colorful rather than something very, you know, rigid, like a clinical or, you know, like a psychiatrist, like something so rigid. I don't know if I'm making sense. But, oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You're preaching to the choir here. Um, yeah. I actually it's never became... It's alternative healing. Yeah, it's alternative healing. Yeah, I never became a licensed therapist or even a teacher of compassion per se. Uh, but uh, I became, uh, I'm, uh, I like to write, tell stories. And that's the reason I'm actually talking to you all, so I can learn, people can learn from these stories. It's right. not, this is um, not a therapy session. This is not even a session where we are disseminating knowledge, but this is right. sharing life experiences. Because we are all human. And we all go through the same challenges that we are saying society is going through. At an individual right. level, we're going through our own challenges every day, right? Right. Um, yeah. I was but I, I have to say, mm -hmm, just before you move on, I have to say, art of being is, um, you know, in the process of engaging licensed therapists. I, I, I understand what you're saying. And of course, there's a lot of experience and wisdom that one could, you know, um, one could extract from storytelling. But also that is not to discount the importance of having um, licensed uh, professionals. Oh, absolutely, work. absolutely. There is a certain type of, um, uh, you know, uh, experience and, and ethical uh, boundaries that are needed in, in this world because there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot happening in the, in the, in the spiritual market 
place for different kind of support and and it's very important to have that credibility so I, I have to say that you know at art of being we engage if if it's going to be a therapy session then it's going to be uh, provided by a less therapist if it is like for example i am i am trained i'm qualified as a therapist but i'm not yet licensed to be a therapist and i have to look at the different licensing bodies to get my my licensing uh, and registration um so uh so it's important to do that yeah so for, so for example absolutely. yeah, yeah. so for and I was saying that so if, it, if it's something that's going to be in, in the brand of um, co you know a consultation or a session it's gonna like I, I, I would do emotional wellness consultations Wow wow and I think I feel these things are very much needed um, a lot of the work is still outside in and to be able to help people to go into their you know understand the psychosomatic nature of the challenges that they're facing to be able to understand it in an embodied way, to be able to understand it even through the arts, for example, and understand where they're feeling stuck is, is such enormous contributions. Um, right. What can people do? I mean, if I were to ask you, the distress level is quite high. And now that the second wave is starting, again, renewed fears are coming up for a lot of people. What would you suggest people do to actually you know, beyond, there are not enough therapists available to consult right now. That's what I feel for many people. Or even the courage to face their demons, if you will. What would you say to a friend or a family member who's going through challenges right now? You know, I would say, first and foremost, you know, just whatever practice that one does whatever religion whatever you know spiritual background whatever spiritual practices just have a, a you know have a practice whether it is taking a walk uh you know in, in your neighborhood whether it's just shutting everything especially the phone and taking you know three four minutes of of breathing uh you know it, it takes three minutes of of some, it takes three minutes to change the brainwave of doing something, breathing, moving, walking. So, so you know, one exercise, wh whether it's praying, whether it's um, breathing, whether it's going on a bike, like an indoor cycle, whatever it is, just, just engage in one practice that gets you out of your mind and into your body. And that is very important because that gets, that makes you more present. And when you are when you are not in the future and when you are not in the past, you are, you know, right here. And there is, I mean, we've, you know, this and, you know, Eckhart Tolle talks about this. There is no fear in the present moment. There's nothing but the present moment. So I think that would, that is one thing. And it's hard, it's hard and it takes discipline. It takes a lot of discipline to find one practice that, um, that uh, would uh, you know support in that, but it's very easy for people to uh, fall into the trap of you know being on their social media and just checking the phone all the time. I mean, everybody goes through it. Everybody goes through it to get out of the fear. But unfortunately, what happens in these cases is the stress, the fear, the anxiety, the paranoia doesn't go away. We're just cushioned. It's yeah. a distraction, isn't it? It's so it's easy to distract ourselves from the pain that I'm feeling in here by, oh, what's happening in the world? Because right. uh, the pain is here, not there. And right. that's in, 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 it's almost like we are looking for a solution outside because it's so hard. Was it um, the alchemist where the person goes on a, in Paolo Coelho's alchemist, the, the person goes on a journey I think yeah. uh, Jose de Santiago and keeps on going and going. And finally, when that person comes back home, right in his back front yard or backyard, that's where the treasure is. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's true about all of us, isn't it? How easy it is to look outside or look where it's not there. I remember even a Mullah Nasruddin story 
and is looking for a key that is lost yeah outside and it's like why aren't you looking where you lost it it's too dark over there <laughs> i'm right. going where it's bright right so looking for a key not where we lost it but where it's easier to look so right. yeah, i know uh, so in fact sometimes i tell myself am i fooling myself by even doing these videos by doing these conversations but uh, these are the moments when it's a reminder to go back to the here and now but again you know one more thing that comes up asma is that people are saying in the here and now there are so many challenges mm-hmm. in other words we hear news mm-hmm. every day we hear about countries being locked down neighbors yeah. being locked down and so on and and you're saying it is still possible to watch our breath to be present and let go of that fear and to be right. totally present right and to also remember that um that we are the holders of of everything like i personally struggled with this at the beginning i i really enjoyed traveling and i used to travel between 6 to every 6 to 8 weeks i would travel and for me whether it's for work like my my corporate day job or for like a retreat i was i was part of uh, or like a vacation um i would uh, you know i felt trapped this this you know this coronavirus situation and no traveling no going out of the house at the beginning in april and in uh, as parts of may i felt very trapped and then i i was like okay hold on a second you you've done you know it's so many workshops it's been like a decade of workshops all this fiber that's all like you know this is the time to apply what i have learned and i know that there's the outer only reflects the inner and inner that i have to find the inner freedom within me you know where am i blocking my own freedom my own inner freedom is it my mind that's telling me that i can't travel or i can't do this or is it you know a, a you know a physical like a somatic block that i'm blocking you know so i you know i practice kundalini yoga so i went and i did a, a, you know some kriyas and five rhythms i did you know we were um there is the, the virtual community now we we do five rhythms in the comfort of our living room and to move through through these blocks and after a couple of weeks it's like actually you know what the 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 uh the inner freedom uh that is in like i hold my my freedom it's in it's inside of me so i think we we tend to forget that we tend to always go outside of ourselves and we don't realize that we our inner world you know shapes our outer when there are inner transformations the outer is just a reflection of that that's true that's true but it's so hard to believe that when the whole world seems to be topsy turvy absolutely absolutely <laughs> because our inner world is also going through the turmoil isn't it yes of course and you know you know we were talking about this um also it's when you have the luxury of um you know alhamdulillah safety you know food the security all of these things then you are free to think about these things but there are some people you know out there who are really struggling who are really really struggling you know they don't know um you know many countries they don't know where the you know where their food is going to come you know whether they're going to have a house by the end of the week you know there are people who are going through really tremendous um a serious uh you know uh you know effects by this virus and and you know we can pray for them we can do charity but we also need to recognize that um that different people are going through different things during this time as well right yes yes and i'm right now in india and uh, we have had that as a, one of our biggest challenges food security just not having enough food or not being at home being thousands of miles away from home or just either you have food or you have home so you know the dichotomy that many people are facing in the migrant worker community and for many people it's easy to just blame the government but it's a very very complex challenge right. um you know i mean if there were enough jobs locally and people wouldn't be migrating 
in our case, we can work remotely. We can use the computer. Uh, we can do a lot of our work from the comfort of our home. Many jobs are not like that. Right. Yeah. So any other closing words? I want to, you know, any plans going forward? You are right now doing things virtually. Yeah. Other than, you know, continuing to grow and, you know, start and grow the first transpersonal uh, center in, in the UAE, in Abu Dhabi specifically. Um, you know, I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm, you know, nervous. I'm just, uh, there are so many different things. And also just patient, you know, really one needs to be patient with, what, with the time because this, uh, what's happening in the world is also a call for patience. It's, like I said, it's a call to find the, the comfort and the discomfort. But I, I don't have any other closing words other than, um, you know, just a, an immense um, gratitude for you, Shankar. Really, you have been um, just incredible at bringing us all together. You know, throughout the years that I have known you, you always like to bring people together with no, you know, agenda, with no, um, you know, expectation. And that's really a gift to know someone and, and, and an example also to know someone um, like that and to, to have like that as an example. So thank you so much. Well, I'm grateful that I get the opportunity, opportunity to bring people together because that's one of the few things I seem to be doing well. Uh, I don't have the discipline, for example, to be a therapist. You have to be a really good listener. I'm not. Uh, I don't have the discipline to go deep into any particular area. I did that in engineering and other things. But at this stage in my life, I feel the joy of connecting people together, connecting movements together, because it's so needed, isn't it? Talking about transpersonal, trans community, connecting different communities together, whether it's uh, you in the UAE, me sitting now in India, or in going to Southeast Asia soon, hopefully, or out there in the West, um, to classify people as different, East versus West, or Hindu versus Muslim or whatever, I think that's completely outdated. It's all passe. And then I think it's real time to bring all the things we know about how to live harmoniously together, isn't it? So that's my dream and uh, it's really a dream. Uh, not, re not sure it's realistic in our lifetime, but at least um, if, if to quote John Lennon, I can imagine that it's possible that we can come together. The fact that you and I, or many of our brothers and sisters from the Middle East, from the West, from the East, can come together from different platforms, from different vantage points, is a blessing indeed. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So with that, uh, maybe we can close. Um, uh, I would say it the way you guys say it, uh, Allah Hafiz and Thank Namaste. You. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Satnam. Thank you. Satnam. Thank you. Satnam. Thank you. Thank you very much. Allah Yahfad Shankar. And I really have um, uh, so much, uh, I like, I just really enjoy our conversations. You're really one of a kind. Well, we all I are. We all I really have a lot of fun talking to you. We all are, and we forget that we are all. Uh, somebody was asking me that I said every single one of us is unique every fingerprint every finger is different and yet we are all connected at the root we are all connected as conscious beings and one consciousness if you will and right. that's where the joy is isn't it yes and we're all one tribe one tribe exactly so have a good to... yeah thank you and say goodbye and have a good weekend Take you care, too. Shankar. You too. Bye now. Have a good one. Thank you. Thanks.